what's going on beautiful people of YouTube my name is Miss Autoflower and today we're going to continue our journey with KNF now usually you go to different people on YouTube and seeing seeking their different styles so if you wanted this style you'll go to this guy if you want this style you'll go to that girl if you want to know something about KNF you go to Chris Trump so what I want to do is I want to be that one stop KNF no tilt so I'm going to bring you guys uh, different twists to KNF. So I've been talking to different people in our community, and one of them being uh, KNF Garden. I don't know if you guys heard of him, but he's uh, well known in the KNF um, community. He is known for his humic acids, his soybean aminos, his uh, bloom spectrum, uh, ferments, his uh, courses that he has, and um, I've been just you know getting together all this information and visualizing what we're gonna do here on our channel and the one thing that I want to do um, that I've been thinking about is before even hopping on and demonstrating what we're doing with the product I actually want to come on and explain what the product is because I can show you how to do this but if you don't know what exactly is going on you're never really gonna learn and register it in your head so like when I was in school I could read a paragraph and I could read it five times but if I don't really know what I'm reading, it's never going to register in my head. So I want you guys to let it resonate and register in your head before I even show you um, how to use it. Does that make sense? Cool. So we're going to be uh, talking about humic acid, soybean amino acid, and his full spectrum bloom ferment uh, that I actually supported him and I picked up. Hopefully it'll be here soon. I know he's a busy guy. But... Uh, yeah, I'm going to be implementing that in our KNF no-till series, and I just want to make sure that you guys are on the same page as me, understand what I'm doing, and, and really just explaining to you what it is before I even come on and show you what I'm doing with it, right? So, let's get to it. All right, so first things first, humic acid. The first thing that I learned about humic acid, and guys, please forgive me for my voice, I am sick. So the first thing I learned about humic acid is that it's one of the complex, most complex acids there is. And it's a result from the breakdown of dead organic material by soil microorganisms. So they're usually a dark brown or black color and they are water soluble in alkaline water. So humic acid actually has a high molecular weight, which makes it an excellent natural uh, soil conditioner. Remember, we talked about biochar being a, a good soil conditioner. This is even better because it improves the properties of soil by supplementing it and rejuvenating it. So at the same time, humic acid improves a, a availability mobility and management of the nutrients in the substrate and improves water retention. So as a medicinal plant grower, that's what we're looking for is something that improves the water retention because without the plant retaining water, it can't be fed. So what makes this humic acid an excellent soil conditioner is it attaches to uh, the micronutrients and it forms a bond with them so that these nutrients can be more easily absorbed by the plants and humic acid also promotes uh, improved uh, ionic I'm sorry improved ion exchange and better soil buffering capabilities humic acid actively allows for nutrients and minerals such as calcium iron magnesium, zinc, and manganese to be absorbed readily, stimulating improved plant growth and healthy roots. This works in any type of uh, grow and provides benefits during all stages of the grow, from the seedling to the veg cycle to the bloom cycle. It works from an immature plant to a mature plant at all walks of life. So that's the great thing about humic acid. So what are the benefits of humic acid? It improves nutrient uptake and mobility 
uh, via chelating action. It improves water retention and drainage of the soil. It improves the buffering capacity and cation exchange. It supports healthy microbial activity, which is something that I'm a geek for. <laughs> it decreases the plant uptake of toxins in soil and improves the photosynthesis and it boosts the plant met metabolism and cell division for better growth and it reduces the amount of nutrients plant needs so it will help you in the long run. Alright guys, so next is amino acids. So when I think of amino acids, I think of science class and the first thing that sticks, sticks in my head is the building blocks of protein. So nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are the three main pillars of nutrient solutions and fertilizers. That's N, P, K. But there's so many other countless nutrients that your cannabis plants need in order to produce that best possible harvest. Amino acids are one of them. So I'm gonna explain to you what amino acids are and why plants and humans are, and actually animals as well, are much more alike than you think. So, when I think of, ba I played basketball when I was younger, believe it or not. I was an all-star basketball player, and the first thing I've learned is amino acids is really important. Now, why is amino acids really important for athletes? That's because they play a key role in the synth synthesizing of the protein. So it's super important uh, for sports recovery and muscle growth. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein and the foundation of both plant and animal life. So why amino acids for cannabis? Well, amino acids equals proteins. And just like humans, plants are alike. So cannabis needs protein as well. So just like proteins are important for the human body, they're equally important for the growth and development of our medicinal plants. So for example, protein, help, protein helps plants by supporting their cellular strength, facilitating the growth of the plant structure, promoting energy generation, stimulating metabolic processes, and facili facilitating the transportation of these nutrients. So, where do these plants get these vital proteins from? Well, this is where humans and plants are different. Unlike humans, plants can't source proteins from other organisms. Instead, they need to create their own amino acids and then use that to build their protein. That's why gardeners, much like me as a basketball player, went crazy for amino acid supplements. So when I saw this soybean, amino acid I went crazy and I got it right away because that is protein for your plant and you need that protein for your plant so why not help put that protein in your plant right that's why I go crazy for this KNF way of life so amino acids help plants by increasing their production of chlorophyll serving as an easily ab absorbable form of nitrogen stimulating um, the, synthesi the synthesize of key vitamins, improving the resistance to pests and diseases, and boosting the strength of their cells. Some amino acids also work together with antioxidants to help cannabis plants deal with stress, which can be caused by high intensity lighting, uh, nutrient solutions, high levels of CO2, and unlike humans, plants can synthesize all these amino acids they need to survive and develop properly. Unfortunately, amino acid synthesis is a high energy process and plants may struggle to produce enough amino acids when exposed to stress. So that's why we help and we implement it in our process when it comes to Korean natural farming with a twist. So, what factors affect a plant's ability to synthesize amino acids? Drought, temperature extremes, poor soil health, pests, diseases, poor lighting, lack of space, poor root health. So, sometimes your, your plant just needs a little extra oomph. So, 
how to give your plant amino acids plants can absorb amino acids via their roots and leaves so I could drench the soil with amino acids or I can make a foliar spray with amino acids in uh, the both vegetative and flowering phases the fastest way for this plant to absorb amino acid is via their leaves so spraying on top the bottom boom 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 bam 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 and it improves the trans transportation of nutrients increases the transpiration and boosts the photosynthesis hence we generally recommend feeding your plants with fuller amino acid versus other uh, fertilizers. But when doing so, carefully measure the amount of fertilizer you use. Just like any other nutrient, overfeeding can damage your plant. Last but not least, his bloom ferment. His bloom ferment, which is an FFJ, fermented fruit juice, has mango, papaya, apple, carrot, zucchini, squash, banana, beet, watermelon, habaneros, and of course brown sugar. So what does this do? It actually is a nutritional activation enzyme that helps improve the condition of the soil and therefore the crops growing in it. Do you begin to see the pattern now guys? So when it comes to this way of life and this way of growing, it has to do with you feeding the soil and improving the soil versus you improving the plant and feeding the plant. So through foliar application, it can improve the flavor of the crops. And because of that, it actually func functions as a natural taste enhancer, but there's so much more to it. When you're making FFJ, the brown sugar is an important ingredient in producing it since it is responsible for the extraction of the photochemicals which can be found in fruits and vegetables. These photon chemicals are accountable for the protection of the cells which fight against damages that may lead to cancer. Scientists anticipate that eating more fruits and veg vegetables may reduce the risk of cancer by 40%. The fermentation process usually takes about a week or two. Some cases it may also take a month or longer. To produce F F F FFJ, it is better to use overripe fruits because it can lessen the fermentation period and necessary microorganisms like molds are already present in them. The natural farming method was developed by Dr. Hein Chow of South Korea. We all know that those of us that are in K and F. It is also used in propagating livestock by adding it to their feeds, which enhances the nutrients received by the animals and it's just one big nutrient cycle. You could produce FFJ using a single kind of fruit or the combination of two, three, four, ten more fruits with high citric acid content like lemons and oranges are not recommended due to their composition which is opposite to the necessary formula formulation that FFJ needs. So, that's just a little on uh, the bloom ferment. If you guys want to learn more about KNF Garden, uh, please check him out on knfgarden.com. He's an awesome guy. Uh, I mean, he is pretty busy. But when he gets the chance, he'll definitely respond and help you guys out. Um, please check him out. It's really worth a try if you guys are into the uh, Korean natural farming way of life. I definitely recommend it. Thank you so much for uh, tagging along, watching along. Keep growing. Keep going. Stay educated. Get medicated. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and smash that like button. No matter how sick I am, I'm going to stick with you guys no matter what till our roots fall off.